welcome back. So, now what we will now study is the setting of a typical communication problem. So, here is the problem of communication in this particular ca the case that I am going to refer to is what is called point to point communication. Point to point in the point to point communication what we have is you have uh, you have information at what is called the source. So, you have some information at a source and what we want to do is we want to replicate this information at a destination. We want this information to be replicated at the destination. So, what this so this the information at the source would be denoted by a random variable s ok. So, let us call let us denote this by a random variable s. So, this here is some source. Now, this and whatever is replicated at the destination let us denote that by a random variable s hat. The goal is to get s hat and s to agree. So, we would want these to uh, become uh, come as close as possible. Now, how is this in how is this source uh, sending information to a destination? It is being sent over a medium. This medium is what is called a channel. This is called a channel. So, that is this this medium could be say for example, could be telegraph, could be uh, could be po uh, could be post, could be email, could be sound waves, could be uh, uh, could be the kind of medium that you are using right now, the internet or whatever. All of these are various types of communication media, and this 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 source is to be sent to the destination over this medium. Now, the remarkable uh, thing okay. okay. now you might think that can you send really any source uh, over uh, over any medium. For example, the source could be taking uh, could be uh, could be say for example, uh, the uh, the letters of the alphabet whereas, this uh, so, so these are letters that are that are pictorially written in a book or on a blackboard or something like that. And the medium that we are referring to could be say radios, the radio medium. Now, if you want to send these uh, letters over a radio medium, the letters themselves cannot directly go into the radio medium. So, therefore, what the what the medium has what one has to do is to somehow convert these these letters into something that into signals that can actually be sent as inputs into this particular medium. So, the medium comes with it comes along uh, comes with a definition of what its allowable inputs and its uh, possible outputs are. So, what you have for a medium are what are called channel inputs and channel outputs. So, this here these are predefined channel in uh, properties of the medium or the channel itself. These are channel inputs and these are channel outputs. So, for example, if this is as I said a radio channel then then in that case it would take electromagnetic uh, inputs and produce electromagnetic outputs. It cannot take pieces of paper as input for instance, pieces of paper where the source is written that is not an input. It cannot take sound, my, my sound itself cannot be chosen taken as an put as an input to this to this into this particular medium. But then if this is the case, if there is a mismatch between the 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 uh, the, uh, the space of the source and the space of channel inputs, then how does one uh, even use this channel uh, to communicate? What one needs to do is then have a, an adapter, you need a way for this source to talk to that medium and that medium to then talk to the uh, later to the final destination. So, you need in between what you know in electrical engineering what we call an adapter uh, or power engineering and so on it is an it is it is basically takes two different formats and makes them uh, compatible with each other. Uh, the in in the communication language this particular thing is is known as an encoder 
So, what the encoder does is basically takes every value, it takes the source random variable and it maps it to a possible channel input. So, let me denote this encoder by a function f. So, the source here goes into the encoder, the encoder maps the, the source to a possible channel input, let us call that channel input x. Now, the channel has a uh, has a character characteristic which of the amount of noise that it it can produce it can a, that it that it adds to the uh, to the to the channel inputs so when you send a channel an input x it produces a possible output y here let's call this output y with a certain probability that is been told to us all right so so it produces so when an input x is sent x not it is not necessary that x itself comes out of the channel it is some some other uh, in, uh, output might come and that output is denoted y. Now, because this could be some other output it does not even have to be from the same space for example, it is quite possible that you send uh, an input of, uh, of uh, you send an electrical impulse on one end and what comes out on the other end of the channel is a sound or a radio wave or something like that all of these are valid definitions of a channel and valid definitions of channel input and channel output. Now, this here again have has the same problem, the output of the channel may not be in the format that you want for your final destination. The final in the final destination you are looking for uh, you are looking to replicate the source and the output uh, s hat. Uh, that so you want the 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 uh, the uh, the output s hat to be in that format, whereas y which is coming out of the channel is not in that format at all. So in that case, then y has to again undergo. You have to put in another adapter here. So the that second thing here is what is called a decoder. Let's denote that by g. So, you have a decoder at the other end of the channel which takes the output of the channel and maps it again to a uh, to something in the destination. So, something that is a possible val uh, valid value for the destination. So, now this is therefore, the the uh, the these the structure or the setting of a typical communication problem. You have a source here, uh, you have a source here S. That, that source is seen by an encoder who, that produces a channel input which is denoted x, that input passes through a channel emerges out as y, y is seen by a decoder which is denoted g, g maps y to a s hat. Now the goal of communication here is to eventually get s and s hat to be close. So, we can measure this closeness in uh, through a function let us call this function d, this function d is a function that that will map uh, that will map s comma s hat to a real number ok or let us say it maps it from this from 0 to infinity. So, d is a measure of the distance between s and s hat this is in com in the communication language is often called distortion ok. So, it is a measure of how far s and s hat are right. So, for instance it, it could be a function in which is 0 only when s is equal to s hat or uh, so uh, and so if you if s and s hat are real valued uh, uh, are real valued random variables for example, d could be the function for example, d could be d of s s hat could be the function norm of s minus s hat square right. So, this is this is a way of measuring the distance between s and s hat. If you want s and s hat to agree exactly then d could uh, d could be a function that is an indicator of s equal to s hat. Right. So, which means that it will take value uh, take uh, take value 1 when 
uh, so it will sorry s e indicator s not equal to s hat. So, which means it will take value 1 uh, when s is not equal to s hat and take value 0 only when s is equal to s hat. This is again another way of measuring the distance between s and s hat because uh, your when s and s hat are exactly uh, 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 equal that is when you get uh, distortion 0 and that is and otherwise you get distortion unity. Okay. So, there are many different ways by which we can define a distortion between uh, your source and destination. This, this distortion is part of the problem definition, it is a, it's a, it is a part of defining what, it, what we mean by quality of communication and what we mean by uh, communication itself, uh, you know what it, what by what we, what we mean by recovery, uh, recovery of the source at the destination. So, then what is the problem of communication then? The problem of communication is now that you have been given this particular uh, this, this, this diagram here, the problem of communication is, is to come up with the right choice of encoder and decoder. Okay? And by what do I mean by right choice? Well, you want, uh, you want to choose the encoder and decoder so, as, so that you get as little distortion as possible. So, the problem of communication is is to is to minimize the expectation of d of s and s hat over all functions f and g right so if you take this uh, d for example to be this uh, this this norm of s minus s hat and for for simplicity let's assume these are just scalars so then in that case this expectation would then become the expectation of s minus s hat squared we would be talking of minimizing this over f and g. So, now let us do this let us write this out a little bit further uh, let us take this particular thing a little bit further uh, you would have already noticed that there is some connect there seems to be some resemblance here to the kind of problems we have already studied. Now, in order to establish that resemblance let us take this one step further. Okay. So, now let us think about this problem uh, in the frameworks that we already have. What do we have here? We, we have the first entity which we called an encoder. What is that uh, encoder? Well, encoder is simply a function, right? The, the encoder is simply a function. It is it, uh, a function that is mapping s to x. It is mapping your source to a possible channel input. You have another uh, entity which we call the decoder. the decoder is mapping y to s hat right so this is your decoder so these are uh, these are basically what f and g are recent, are just functions now in a, let's let's try to look at this problem in the kind of frameworks that we have defined so far it is clear that this is a stochastic decision problem because after all there is a random variable which is s there is there is an encoder there is a decoder these these encoder and decoder are actually functions these functions are mapping uh, random variables to what you can say are actions and then based on those actions we are receiving a cost and the cost is is encoded in this function d right so it's clear that the typical communication setup is really a, a stochastic decision problem Although that is not how it is normally studied, no people do not often uh, normally study this as a stochastic decision problem, but once we look at it in the framework that we have defined, it really is a some kind of stochastic decision problem. And now that we know it is a stochastic decision problem, we have we can start asking ourselves many more sharper questions. For example, if it is a stochastic decision problem, then is there a what is what are f and g? f and g are the f and g are functions that are chosen by that, that define your encoder and decoder. Another way of looking at f and g is, is to say well f comma g together forms a policy. I can say well that f comma g here is a policy in my and the communication problem is a stochastic decision problem in which what we need to do is find the optimal policy 
finding the optimal controller is really uh, or finding the optimal encoder decoder is really about finding the optimal policy. So, optimal encoder decoder really uh, is equivalent to finding optimal policy. Alright, so there is some, so we can, we are already seeing that there is some kind of a stochastic control analog building here, right? There is there is a policy that we have to find. There is a cost that we have. Uh, now, question then is, okay, if there is a policy, then what is the information structure? What is the information structure? Now, what is the information structure in this problem? Let us go back and look at this. The, at the end of the day, the goal of the communication problem is, is to reproduce this source here at the destination. So, the reason for reproducing the source at the destination is because the source is not already known at the destination. All this paraphernalia here has been introduced because we need, because the source is actually not known already at the destination. So, no, so what this means is the, the entity that is producing S hat, right, the entity that is producing what is known at the destination that is S hat, this entity does not actually have knowledge of S. So, if I highlight here, this S is not known to G, this is not known, right. What is known then to G? Well, G is standing on the other end of the channel. Think of the channel as a medium such as for example, uh, a radio or something like that uh, with no other way of talking to the source. The, so, what the decoder has to do is, is to look, it, it is compelled to look at only what comes out of the medium and maps that to a, to, to a destination. So, this particular thing that, see the, so the only thing that the decoder actually knows is the value of y. So, the, the information, information of, of g is y. This is all that the, uh, that the decoder knows, right. What does the encoder know? Well, the encoder encoder obviously only knows the source. The encoder has seen the source and it has mapped it to the channel input. Then thereafter the channel has taken over, channel has produced its out the output and the decoder has seen it at the other end and is producing what is come uh, its, esti its estimate as hat. So, the information with the encoder then is only the source information. So, this what the encoder knows. information of f is s. So, the encoder only knows s. So, the as, as now, now let us see what, what does this, this actually mean. This means now we have a policy in which there are two decision makers or two controllers. We have a policy with two controllers. The first acting controller is seeing s, the second acting controller is seeing y. Now, how is y produced? Well, y itself is produced, produced from x and x itself is f of s. In other words, y depends, depends on f of s. This means that the information of the second acting controller depends on the action of the first acting controller. But the first, but the second acting controller does not have access to the information of the first acting controller. So, which means that, so G, G's information depends on F of S, but 
G does not have access to does not have access to S does not have the access to the information that produced uh, that was used to produce S f of S which means what does all of this mean I, I guess it is evident by now that this problem has a non classical information pattern. So, this problem the communication problem is a non classical information structure. Indeed this is exactly what uh, what makes communication uh, a problem in itself. The reason of the non classical information structure is tell is because is also why communication is in fact a problem. We need to communicate because the second because the source is not known at the destination and once the source is not known at the destination whatever encoded messages we send to the destination are affected by the actions that we choose at the source uh, at the source end and that act those actions affect the information at the other end but the uh, but the entity at the other end which is your decoder or your receiver of information it does not have access to the information that you had when you produced your actions so as a result of this there this is in fact in a, pro a problem with non classical information structure. So, coming back to this communication setting here all actually communication problems therefore, are really problems of non classical information structure they are they are they although they are not uh, studied uh, in that sort of way it is implicit that that these are prob that that such problems have have in them a non classical information pattern which is why they they merit is um, they, which is why they, they, they merit a special attention. Now, let we will uh, we will see this a uh, little more deeply in the next class that now that we know that this has a non classical information pattern we can ask start asking sharper questions. For example, well if this is a non classical information pattern then is it static or is it dynamic? If it is static then can, uh, w then maybe we can solve the problem because we already know a little bit about about the about static uh, static information structures if it is dynamic then that uh, then we can ask questions about the dual effect is there is there such a thing as a dual effect in this particular problem so all of these uh, these questions can be asked once we once we view the uh, once we view the uh, the, the uh, communication problem as really a stochastic control problem Another way of viewing the stochastic control problem, uh, the communication problem as a stochastic control problem is to think of the encoder decoder as a team that this is in fact a team of players that are trying to communicate and their cost is you know, is given here by this, this uh, by this function d. This, this team is uh, uh, the team comprises of these two agents called encoder and decoder and they, uh, they have in them a non between them a non classical information structure. So, this this particular this is the view that we will take forward for the remaining part of the course and and as we get to this to the end of this course I hope it is now becoming evident how all these various problems stochastic control problems problems from uh, problems from organizational structure and now problems from communication are really all instances of one common theme that these are really stochastic decision problems under various information structures. So, I will see you for the rest of the course.